Okay, so I've added another element to our project here, a little text object that says 3D rocks right up here in the front. And you see, if you look at the other views, it's a, a bit in front of the background object. And the reason I'm doing this is because now I want to talk about what's called depth of field. And this is to control the focus of our camera. So, you know, in real life, a camera has a, a certain area that's in focus and certain areas that are out of focus, depending on how close or far the objects are from the lens and what the focus setting is on the camera. Well, you can simulate that exact effect inside motion using cameras. So when you've got your camera selected, there's another area, this is hidden by default here, but there's a second category of controls called depth of field. And you see in here what we have is the, the amount of blur, focus offset, near focus, far focus, and a few other settings here. In order to see the results of the depth of field, there's a couple things you must do. First of all, you must go to the render menu up here and make sure the depth of field is turned on. This is turned off by default because it does take a lot of rendering power to uh, display this, the, the out of focus stuff. And so this is turned off. You can turn it back on just by making sure that check mark is checked. And you can do that here in the render menu or up here in the view menu, render options, depth of field. And you see there's a shortcut for it. We're going to come back and talk about these other things shortly. Uh, but so right now we're just talking about this depth of field stuff. Make sure that's turned on. And then as I raise the depth of, of field blur amount above zero, so as I adjust that, you see suddenly that the text object has gone out of focus. Now the boxes over here, the objects, the, the circle and the rectangle are still in focus, but the text object is too close to the camera to be in focus. And we can control what area is in focus by adjusting the near focus and far focus. And you see, as I adjust these, you'll start to see new lines appear that show us what the near area, you know, what area is in focus. And I can drag that all the way down so that everything's in focus. If I make that, you know, you're just watching the line there in the view. If it's all the way up to the camera, then that's then everything's in focus. And as I go further away, now we're past the 3D letters. They're still pretty sharp because they're we're right up against that. But the further away we go, the blurrier they get. And you see if I make that all the way out to there, now those the boxes is in focus. The area in between these two lines is in focus, but the area in front of that is out of focus. And again, the, the further you go away, the more blurry it appears. Similarly, you can adjust the far focus. And you see we can control what areas beyond the, the current focal length are in focus. So actually, right now I'm gonna, let's just start by taking our rectangle here, and I'm gonna move that rectangle further away. Let's move that way out to there. And we'll make it a little bit bigger so that you can see it clearly. Um, with the rectangle, it's gonna be a little bit harder to see that it's going blurry, but you'll be able to see a little bit there. And so now I've got the big rectangle there. We select our camera again. We can see where our, our far focus is, right? So right now the rectangle is in focus, but if I move it closer, then that rectangle starts getting a little bit soft. And if I amp up the blur amount there, we'll see it a little bit more dramatically. So now we're doing a really extreme amount of blur. Um, and you can see the in indication there, it's out of focus because it's beyond that far focus point. So if I extend my far focus, well now it becomes, it comes back into focus, it goes sharp again. You can also offset the entire focus range. So if our near focus and our far focus are measured to these points, I can then say focus offset and shift the whole thing in or out. And you see, as I do that, you can watch the active camera changing. If I move the focus in, this is basically like t changing the focus ring on a lens, right? You've got a certain amount of range that's in focus, and then we can choose, is that in focus or is this in focus? And you can do like a rack focus effect, you know, moving along by, by adjusting this focus offset command. And of course, just like every other parameter in motion, this is um, keyframeable or you could add a behavior to modify it. So you could do this rack focus effect as a dynamic effect over the course of your show. There's another way to control the focus offset, which is to use the focus on object command or press control F. And what that means is you basically can select a specific object. Like I'm gonna select the box here and I'm gonna choose focus on object. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna shift my focus offset here. Let me, I'll select the camera. So we can see I'm going to do an undo, and you see it moved the focus offset from there 
to there. And let's make it even more dramatic. So let's, let's say our starting focus is like this, where the box is out of focus and the text is in focus. And then I choose focus. Oh, let me have to select the object there. I select the square and choose focus on object. And now it shifts my focus so dramatically. And again, I'll show you the before and after here. If I uh, just select the camera so you can see the parameter, I do an undo. There's the starting point. And then when you choose focus on object, it shifts that focus offset so that the object you selected is in the center of your focus range, right on the focal plane. And uh, that is just another way of controlling the focus uh, using that focus offset control. So this is the idea of depth of field, very powerful. There is also a couple other settings in here. Gets a little bit more fancy, whether you want the actual way that things are blurred to be using a Gaussian blur or a defocus blur. It's a subtle difference, and you can choose whether a disk or a polygon. And I really wouldn't get too deep into this unless you're really into the math of how things are blurred. Uh, but those options are there for you. There's also this check mark for infinite focus, which is going to make sure that no matter what, anything off into the distance is always going to be in focus, regardless of your far focus setting. So if infinite focus is set, the far focus setting has no effect.